He left to help himself. He went back to help others. And along the way, he nearly lost everything. Brian Head Welch is the co-founder and lead guitarist of the Grammy Award-winning multi-platinum metal band Korn. And he's here to share the incredible story of leaving the hardcore music scene only to have God lead him back to his tribe and to his band. Good to have you with us. Thank you. I think you were here about four or five years ago or so, and uh, it was great having you then. But it's been a long, long trip in a long journey since since that time. Yeah. Just for the sake of uh, folks that uh, haven't heard your story yet, Brian, uh, you say there was kind of like a, a, a significant moment where things started to come into focus and your life changed when Jesus introduced himself. So tell us a little bit about that come to Jesus moment and, and what uh, brought you to that place. Yeah, um, well, you know, when I was... Ten years old, I started playing electric guitar. My parents got me a guitar, and I got into all these bands, ACDC, Iron Maiden, Motley Crue, all these heavy metal bands, and I thought that was the, the, the life, and I wanted to be a rock star. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of kids want to be rock stars, and for some reason, I made it yeah. when I was in my early 20s, and I, and I became a rock star, but it just I, I ended up being empty and just, you know, just the drug addiction, the, the whole same story, yeah. you know, and uh, so Jesus came into my life in 2005, and... I just instantly fell in love with just his presence and uh, just that it was like everything I was searching for. And and I ended up leaving the band mm -hmm. because I had a six-year-old daughter at the time and her mom um, was out of her life and I was the only one mm -hmm. there for her. So I decided to leave and raise her. So you did it for the sake of getting your, your daughter out of that environment. That was one of the main reasons. And yeah. then the other reason was like, you know, I want to get to know God, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. and I want to stop touring. I want to be in one place, yeah. home. So what was the response to that? I mean, I, I think it shook the heavy metal band world. Yeah. It took it by surprise that you came to faith in Christ. What was that transaction? I mean, the transition like for you? It was it was kind of crazy because I was, I was looked at as a crazy, oh, the guy thinks he saw Jesus and now mm -hmm. he's, you know, and all that. So, mm -hmm. but you know what's cool nowadays? There's so much, so many more metal musicians that have found Jesus, like mm -hmm. Alice Cooper, mm -hmm. um, the Iron Maiden drummer. I used to love Iron Maiden back in the day. And uh, yeah, just a, a lot of people, guitarist for Ozzy, mm -hmm. you know, just it's there's huh. I'm not the only weirdo now Jesus freak. <laughs> You're not the only Jesus freak in heavy metal, right? Uh, after leaving Corn, uh, what was I mean? Were there trials that you kind of faced and some some tribulations, not just criticisms, but just having to adjust to a lifestyle outside of you know your your people group and and your band and and kind of the that you know, touring yeah. kind of lifestyle. Yep. Um, Oh man, the trials. I mean, at first I was, I felt like I had wings and I was flying and God was like, it was me and God walking every day through life. And it was just, it was just magical feeling. And the next thing you know, I start praying these prayers. I'm, I'm growing in the Lord and I start praying things. I hear people pray like, hey, pray that your faith grows. And so I start praying my faith grows. And then when you pray your faith grows, you're going to get put in situations where all you have is faith. <laughs> right. So like within a few years, I lost all my money. I lost two cars. I lost my house, a huh. foreclosure. Wow. Really? Bad wow. business deals. Uh, yeah. Bad People would say in the world would call it bad luck. Just yeah. one thing after another is going wrong. Yeah. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Where are you? You know? Yeah. And uh, so he strengthened me and matured me through a lot of that. You know, just the fire of... Huh. The trial, yeah, the you know. trial of your faith works patience, mm -hmm. and that's what was happening, huh? Now, were you involved in music at all after yeah. you left Corn? Did you have some solo things going on there, or try to I try did. to get into Christian music? Uh, you know, I hate to say, business and industry. Yeah, I did. Um, I uh, at, at first, the first thing I did is wrote a book, and that was my first book, Save Me from Myself, and that did really well. That was like out of the gate, two years after I got saved, and. And it was really well. But after I started doing music, it was not as... Uh, I started a, a, a record label in the hopes of that I could get people like me, like-minded with faith, you know, that I could put out music. And um, I started a label, and within a year, the label, like, crashed and burned, or mm -hmm. maybe a year and a half, and uh, put out music, and it sold a little bit, um, did okay, and went and played shows. And it just seems like the some of the Christians didn't know what to do with me, mm -hmm. and uh, it was weird. I was caught in the middle because the world didn't thought I was crazy, and then the Christians were kind of scared of me because I'm just, yeah. 
you know, kind oh, of yeah. different. But um, <laughs> but I found my I found my niche in the uh, in the in the hardcore uh-huh. uh, uh, Christian world and uh-huh. stuff like that, and that was fun. So, yeah. but that door wasn't necessarily blown wide open for you, and and you know, you, you sense that maybe God's blessing wasn't wasn't there uh, in in that arena at that time. I felt like He wanted me to go to His bride because the church is His bride. He loves the church, and I felt like. You know, I was supposed to go. I went and I put out my book and I told my testimony in many churches all over the country. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like I was being faithful with that at first. Just, and it gave people a lot of hope that, you know, the world's not, not it's just going to hell. You know, God is at work. Yeah. And yeah. So, so he used me a little bit, you know, along with many others. And so that was my calling then. Yeah. And, uh, and then he just transitions me. You know, you just can't predict what God's going to do. He's just, he's wild. Brian, in your new project, with my, my, my eyes wide open, you get really vulnerable. You just tell your story. And I think sometimes many Christians feel like we have to clean it all up and make it pristine. I mean, what's been the response to, you know, being so open to people about your journey, the mistakes and the miracles you've experienced? Um, they're, they're really... Uh, they're really appreciative because, you know what, this generation, if what's re- everything's reality, mm-hmm. everything. The TV shows, the, you know, the, the Internet and everything, and it's just like everyone can smell a phony like miles away, and you've got to be real. And so that's, I got grace on my life for it because some people tell me, like, it's just natural for me. Some people are like, I could never talk about it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just, uh, I, I got grace for it, and that's all I could say. And I think we we as Christians need to, grow and ask for grace for that because we don't have it all together all the time and life is hard it's a struggle and and you know we should i think when we share our struggles and overcoming them mm-hmm. it, it prophesies into other people's lives that it's going to be okay and, we're, and and they feel like they can relate you know okay so it's one thing for you to go through so many trials and tribulations but then you turn around and you've watched your daughter mm, yeah, um, yeah. you know go through these some of the same things you experienced how what kind of grace is on your life to deal with that well that's a whole nother ball game because yeah. mm-hmm. i wrote uh, my book on my apple computer and i could have put the you know just made it crashed my computer from the tears that were falling on wow. it because it's mm-hmm. like there's one thing to write about how I screwed my life up mm-hmm. but there's another thing to write about you know watching your daughter's life fall apart in front of your eyes so that's what I went through and uh it was harder to write than my first book because of that fact and uh you know she went through a lot of what these teenagers go through and you know I've been on a few tv shows lately because the book came out even Christian shows where people are telling me their kids are going through the same yeah. thing depression yeah self-hate cutting yeah cutting um suicidal thoughts and threats i mean it's it's an epidemic and so you know my daughter went through it i found her help and uh we got through it and then she's so brave she was like you can share my story you know yeah. so in, in the real detail she let me share because you know she i think she has that same grace where she has to be she wants to be real so yeah. that she can do something for this generation yeah. you know for uh, for parents watching today that might be in that same position, I mean they're they're in your your converse right now, uh, your shoes where they've got a a daughter or son going through some some deep stuff. Uh, you said you found some help. Uh, what kind? What was the best help you found, or how did how did you really kind of see some breakthroughs in that area? Um, well, I I found a boarding school for her and. Uh, and I was exploring all options, but that just uh, it just landed in my lap. It was a God thing. And, um, you know, it was perfect because the, the girl that runs it is named Tiffany Claywell and Travis Claywell, her husband. Um, anyway, Tiffany, she used to follow around the rock bands like when she was younger. So she totally, and then she got saved. Like she had piercings, all this stuff, and then she got saved. Totally changed her life. You wouldn't even recognize her. But um, but she understands my life. She understands my daughter's life and being around that stuff young. And so God just totally restored her life. She didn't want nothing to do with God. And my daughter didn't. And then mm-hmm. now she's just like, she found God went after her himself and she opened up her heart. Yeah. So, herself, and it's so. Jenea, right? Jenea, yeah. And she's doing well today. She's doing great today. And I would just tell other parents, like, tough love. Mm-hmm. If you're going through this, tough love. Anything that you can do. Don't enable them and don't, you know, just because you love them doesn't mean that you you just do everything that they want. Yeah. You love them by 
you know, we only got one chance when they're 18, they're illegal adults, so just tough love with your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, Brian, it is so typical when a person gets saved, say, come out of the industry that you were in or that you're still in, right. that the church rushes to change that person. You have to mm -hmm. clean it up. You have to get rid of the tattoos. I mean, you're hearing, you're living proof that God can use a person right where they are, looking the way they look, just going out, um, sharing the gospel. Kind of hit on that for a little bit because I think sometimes we feel like we have to change people and clean it all up. Yeah, it's... um. Well, if you if you notice things about God, there's one thing that I've learned, and He's really not in a hurry, like most of the time. <laughs> he's not in a hurry, and so we have to like remember that. And so, what we do is we get Christ inside of people, and when mm. Christ comes in, He starts to work, and slowly but surely changes. You know, there's some dramatic changes. I've seen people, and it just makes me crazy that they're just like, they they just totally change and miraculous and that's mm -hmm. rare my my thing was it took years it was like a, a, the onion you know it's like the mm -hmm. layers off the onion you know and and so um so it was just uh i think we we need to be patient and we can't change people we can help them along the journey but you know jesus hung out with sinners and he uh and he was patient with his he got frustrated with his disciples but you know he was yeah. patient with them and and, uh, you know, so we just got to remember that, you know, yeah. God's working slowly but surely. Yeah, and allowing mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit to do what he, what only he can do. Yeah. And we just do what he asks us to do. Hey, we're going to have you back on tomorrow's show. A lot more with Brian Head Welch on Friday's Harvest. Uh, what led him to go back and rejoin the band Corn and the tribe and uh, get back into touring. And the fact that uh, you guys got a, well, you <laughs> brought a crew member on or you got a crew member who's part of the, the, the team that's there at the uh, concerts and, and events, and he's out there kind of asking God, show me who to target, and, and evangelizing and sharing the gospel with people at concerts. So we're going to get into all that tomorrow, but if you'd like to connect with Brian Head Welch, pick up a copy of With My Eyes Wide Open, a lot of critical acclaim for this book, so transparent, so honest, so authentic, and opening up on how God can transform a life. You can go to brianheadwelch.com net or go to our website harvest-tv.com you'll find an easy way to link back to his site as well again he's going to be back with us tomorrow but when we return pastor mark lance has today's connections <laughs>